All right, guys, welcome back to a new vlog. Before I get started, I wanted to give a little shout out to my new blogger, Idra, right here. If you're ever in need for a haircut near Roma Norte or just Mexico City in general, what is the place called again? It's um, Catherine de la Roma. Caterina de la Roma. Catherine. Catherine. Catherine de la Roma. I stumbled upon him about two weeks ago and he is absolutely amazing. So the new look that you guys have been loving is all due to this genius. So I just wanted to include him in this little vlog and show you guys when he's done. Check it out. Yeah. <laughs> Et voila! Man, did he do a good job. That's probably my best move of 2024 so far. It's running into Idra. This guy is just an absolute magician. And I had been, I had the idea of getting the Viking type braids for a while now. But for some reason, I, it kind of got. I don't know. He went into hibernation and then I ran into him and he came with that idea like, hey, why don't you do that? And I was like, well, I've been meaning to do that. It's crazy how a different hairstyle or a different haircut can make you feel like an entirely different person. Like, I was just, you know, looking in the mirror the other day and it's funny, I realized that I truly and wholeheartedly believe and feel that this is the absolute best version of me. And there is... Yeah, and that's how you know we're back in Mexico City. By the way, guys, um, this is the first vlog in about, I think, like six weeks? No. Nah actually two months um i spent the whole december back in belgium and i told myself i was gonna vlog there once i collected some thoughts and ideas but it was such a wholesome and amazing month and i just wasn't in that in that flow i just was not in that state of mind to pick up the camera and share my thoughts i was too much in the moment I was too much enjoying it and let me just I fucking hate waiting at red lights it's something that's really I should work on but I cannot help myself um, last December was by far the best December I ever had in my entire life just 31 days of catching up with friends, family, enjoying the cold, enjoying the dark, enjoying home. And I did not have a single bad day. And I'm just so incredibly grateful for that for my life. And just to circle back to what I was saying about being the absolute best version of myself, it's funny because when I was a kid, I would always ask my dad, you know, like, when, when am I going to be at my strongest? For some reason, that was a question I always had. Don't ask me why. And I remember him always telling me, he would always tell me, a man is his, you know, at his best physically. Like, it's hard, it's kind of hard to explain. He would always say, as a man, you're, you kind of like your 20s, your late 20s are supposed to be your best time. But I always remember my dad telling me that he felt in terms of the total package and in terms of also just like real strength and, and physical strength and I guess emotional and mental strength. He always used to say, in my mid-30s, that's when I was at my absolute peak. Um, and I'm 35 now, I'm turning 36 in, 
in uh, about five months. And talk about manifesting. Like, in every single way, in the gym too, like, I'm just, I'm stronger than ever, even though I probably was more flexible and, and in certain ways faster when I was younger, but I don't know, I feel like I've never been in the shape, shape I am today, even when I was 22 or 24, well, when I was 24, I was literally about to die in the hospital with my cancer, so that's not saying much, but my point is, and especially if you're a natural athlete, you're a natural bodybuilder or, or like just, you know, like you don't take any shortcuts, it takes such a long time for a man's body to really fully mature and to really get that muscle maturity. And yeah, I guess it's a long-winded way to say, if you're a young man watching this, and you're like maybe 28, 29, please understand and please believe me when I say the best is yet to come. That is if you take care of yourself. Um, I cannot stress that enough. I have peers that are four, five, six years younger that I, that I also grew up with. But in Belgian culture, especially where I'm from, people tend to drink a lot and really abuse alcohol. And those dudes that are now hitting only 30, 31, are already looking 45. Like, some of them look terrible. And I truly believe a huge part of that is, is diet, exercise, and just lifestyle. Sleep is also a big one, so please, if you're watching this as a young, younger person, understand the good part doesn't start until you're in your mid-30s. Cannot stress that enough. And I'm just so, you know, I, this last December has really been a turning point for me because spending so much time in isolation in my first stint in Mexico City, where I had a tough time developing a social circle, it really helped me appreciate life so much more and it really allowed me to become a more grateful person. And I feel like I've successfully carried that over into the new year. So, that's what I wanted to say to begin with. And now I wanna, the main reason why I wanted to vlog today is something that actually happened to me last night. Something that honestly made me quite sad. And I'm gonna try to be as objective and rational as I possibly can as I discuss it. By the way guys, if you're noticing me kind of like being out of breath simply from walking and holding a camera, that's because I've only been back in Mexico City for 12 days now. And the height difference is very real. So Mexico City is 2,400 meters up from sea level. So that means that Whenever you leave for a couple of weeks and you come back, your body has to readjust to the lack of oxygen in the overall atmosphere and the air. So that'll have you feeling out of breath way quicker. Because <laughs> I can already see someone going like, look at this motherfucker talking about being in the best shape. Being, you know, gasping for air. From holding a camera and walking around, so that's why. Anywho, I um, wanted to talk about something that happened last night as I maneuver through a more busy part of the Roma Norte. This is actually my, uh, my old hood. Um, as you know, I have finally... Man, this place is crowded as hell. Let me... I've actually successfully escaped Casa Cucaracha, how I like to call it, the, my previous house where I was living. Um, 
which was nothing less than an absolute nightmare. Like you guys remember the videos, I had the worst roommates in the world and I spent the last three months of my stint in that house living at war with my five roommates. Like all of them basically hated my guts and I hated them right back. That's just, <laughs> that's just how it was. And uh, there definitely was a lot of pride involved from my side in terms of refusing to, you know, let them chase me out before I had planned to leave. Um, looking back on it, maybe it's a bit silly to put yourself in that position, but I did learn a lot from it once again. Like, that carried over into me being a much more grateful person and just standing the center with, with people that I love, people that I respect, and people that have the same values as me. With that being said, I have moved in to a new house, same co-living company, just a way different house, way better neighborhood, and the house is like, I'm gonna make a video showing you guys how soon, it's just, it's absolutely amazing, like it's, it's just, it's, for only a little bit more money, it's, I upgraded so incredibly much. Um, it's just beautiful. Everything about it is better. I had an insane rooftop terrace. Um, I do have seven roommates before I had five, but it's all good. Um, I'll do a video on that later. You, by now, by the time that this vlog drops, you will already have seen me do my lives in that new house. So you already kind of get the gist of it. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of plants, <laughs> a lot of nature, just overall a lot of, a lot of beauty, really. Um, so that being said, wait, let me, yeah. That being said, I still, oi, damn. Every time. They get me every time. So yesterday, I I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this story intentionally intentionally vague. Um, oh, before I start the story, sorry guys, one more thing. Uh, today I'm also <coughs> 13 days into uh, a very quite extreme dopamine detox. So. The center was amazing, but at the same time, it was quite hedonistic with a lot of enjoyment on a daily basis and no restrictions in every single way you can possibly imagine. So, because of that, I deemed it necessary to ring in the new year with a, uh, a hard reset for January. So, I am 13 days into Absolutely no alcohol, no weed, no sex, no porn, no posts on social media. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I, in this, I originally included no shopping, just like no purchases in terms of the clothing and stuff like that. But as you may or may not have noticed, I just had to pick up this incredible jacket. Call me materialistic, I know. I just, I could not resist. Um, I just, there's a lot of vintage stores here. And then, ironically, this isn't even vintage, so it's, it's brand new. Um, and <laughs> I just put it on and it spoke to me. And then I was like, I didn't pick it up. I left, I came back and I was like, if you give me a discount, I'll buy it right now. And he gave me a pretty sweet discount on the spot. Um, so I was like, screw it. Let's go. So I did fumble on that. But the main ones, obviously, if you know me, if, you, if you've been following the channel, 
has always been, well, mainly weed, really. That's the main one. And then I've been successful at maintaining that. So, yeah, that's where we are at right now. Wow, 14 or close to 15 minutes into the video. And I'm only now about to tell the story. So, the story goes as follows. Yesterday I went out with a, a friend and this friend had his, had his cousin visiting him here in Mexico City. His cousin and his girl, that's what he told me. And he asked me if I wanted to join him um, and go out with them. As my friend has just recently moved into Mexico City and he's not really that hip to the city yet and doesn't really know which places are popping so I mean that's not the reason he invited me he's just like he, he invited me because we get along really well and then obviously I offered my recommendations so long story short um, I meet his cousin I meet the cousins I meet the girlfriend and Cousin was a really good looking guy, really, you know, charming, knows how to talk. Uh, yeah, just like an absolute playboy. Um, and then his girl was an absolute sweetheart. So I spoke with both of them extensively. At some point I had a really quite deep, I would say, conversation with um, the girlfriend and it just struck me how pure she was and, and how how beautiful of a person she was and she mentioned things like you know we, we, we were talking about her religion she's a very religious person which obviously I I respect and uh, she mentioned how she made it her, you know, her vow for the new year was to try and give a compliment to somebody every single day. So just like, a, honestly, a, a young girl, yes, quite young, but just a sweet little angel. Um, I'm going to sit down, guys, because I'm a little, little bit, little bit tired, to be honest. And... Um, yeah, I was just impressed by, by her, by her energy, by her mindset, by all of those things. And by him, he was also like just a, a great guy. And, and I told him, I'm like, you guys are truly a beautiful couple. And then, you know, I, I meant that. So we go out, we're having a good time, yada, yada, yada. And at some point they asked me to go to, uh, to a club. So I took him to one of the nicest clubs in the city, this really exclusive rooftop place. We pull up, there's already like a queue of like 30 people. You know, like, you guys know I hate club culture because it's the thirdest thing from fair. It's like only people would, would like, they basically, you know, they pick and choose who gets to go in and a lot, of, a lot of it is based on the way you look. Now this guy, Charner, great talker, good looking. He got us in like, like it was nothing. It was quite impressive. So we get in, we're laughing because, you know, we skipped a bunch of people. It's like, you know, deep down, I don't like that. But at the same time, it's like those people know what the game is about. So, and, uh... More often than not, I was on the other end of that, of that whole thing. So, so we're there, we're having a good time. And as soon as we're in, I noticed there's, there's like a group of girls and they walk by and they're looking at, at, at the cousin, right? And they're clearly, you know, they're get the, their body language speaks more than, than words Ezra, Ezra could. It was clear that they were all like, oh my God, look at this, look at this guy. Which is absolutely fine, obviously. 
um, didn't think I didn't think anything of it and so at some point the girlfriend had to go to the bathroom and literally in mere seconds like I'm not even like she literally she was gone for about six and a half seconds and the group of girls that passes by earlier literally just pull up they roll upon you know the cousin and they uh, they 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 start you know they, they 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 start talking like one girl in specific and it was just like in it was like straight to the chase you know like no time to waste it was just I fucking galore and yeah it was it was clear and and he was going all in and I was like damn like really like you got this amazing girl but like I like you're gonna you're gonna do it like this it's kind of wild so I was thinking the back I'm not gonna lie I was pretty shocked um, and the girl is, is, is chatting him up and it was funny because it really it, you know like girls are predators just as much as men just as much so I'm like Damn, this is this is kind of messed up. Like, not kind of like, you know, like I really I, I didn't like it at all. I was like, but I'm like, dude, like, his girl only went to the bathroom. She's gonna be back any time now. So I guess you know he doesn't realize that or what's going on. So the girlfriend comes back. He keeps talking to her. He keeps talking to the girl that pulled up, and his girl goes and stands behind him. Literally just like being blocked, you know, off of the conversation. And I'm watching the whole thing. And I'm like, any time now, like she's about to like throw a glass in the face or like, you know, yell at him or like, but no. She just stood there and she just took it. This super beautiful, intelligent, um, amazing soul. She just accepted it and honestly it broke my heart and it made me realize you know and then after like I would say 20 seconds the cousin was kind enough to include like oh you're back and then and by that by that point the girl that rolled up was like oh so oh you got a girl and then she kind of like she uh she basically immediately um, went away and I'm thinking well now it's about like she's about to confront him and be like what the hell are you doing but nope none of that none of that none of that none of that and he was just snarking and laughing and it was all good and it just made me realize like you can like I promised myself I was gonna try to be rational and not too dramatic about it but it doesn't matter how how good you treat people it seems and it doesn't matter like which values and and which like and and, and again like I talked to this girl extensively and, and she was all about values and ethics and morals and religion and and just you know intelligent and and all that and yet she was still very clearly willing to sacrifice all of those things just to be with this really good looking guy just to basically be able to hold on to this prize of a man and and then you realize a couple of things it's men are no different from women like men often get you know kind of get uh put into that superficial bracket like women love to deem all men superficial and, and just like yeah like we're just like horny dogs that just want a hot girl and that's all we care about but I've seen it with my own two eyes man women are the same they're the same they're the same they'll sacrifice their dignity they'll eat shit if they think 
that they are they cannot do better than the guy that they're dating and it's incredibly sad and it, it's just like I would be lying to you if I said that I did not you know kinda connect that to to me myself and my situation and they're like it just made me feel like here I am trying to be the best possible version of myself that I could possibly be like trying to be a good man trying to take care of my body but also the way I treat people the way I you know the way I just the the person I want to be and and even when I was talking to the girl, and I'm not gonna lie, like obviously you can tell by now, like I, I liked her. Not that I would ever act on that, obviously, but I, I did like her. I was very much charmed and you know by her and, and attracted to her, and her kindness really like touched me, and, and and I found her very attractive. But and I felt like we clicked. I felt like we could, we connected, but none of that like none of that mattered because at the end of the day. There's this really good looking hot dude and and that's it, you know? That's all, that's what it comes down to. That's the baseline of it. And it made me sad. It made me very sad. It made me upset. It made me, you know, shortly after that I, I left because I was like, this is fucked. <laughs> I even told my, my friend, I told him, I'm like, dude, that ain't right. That is messed up. Like, he's a, I used the word puto, which is like male whore, kind of. I'm like, he's a fucking, he's a piece of shit. Like, that ain't, that ain't right. Um, and shortly after that, I left. Because it just really, like, affected me to watch this girl just, like, willingly eat shit and be humiliated. Literally humiliated just because she's like, I gotta hold on to this hot dude. And it made me wonder, you know, I always preach about your internal energy um, surpassing and outshining your physical shell. But it made me realize that at the end of the, at the, end of the day, we we're playing a dirty superficial game in this society, in this in this life of ours, and uh, no matter how hard you try, sometimes it just is what it is. So I wish I could offer a uh, some type of positive conclusion or some type of deeper understanding or learning, but at this point, all like I, all I wanted to do is just kind of like share this story, see what you guys had to say. Um, obviously, I already. I, I can already imagine some people, are, some people are gonna say, well, she's a young girl, and this will probably and likely change with age. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, because I have seen it um, in, in women that are slightly older as well, and especially in this day and age, I feel like a lot of women um, and then would rather stay alone and live a life in solitude and be lonely without a partner uh, before they would ever be willing to consider to settle on a, on a physical level. I think that's just kind of where we're at in, in, uh, in this day and age. Yeah, that's it. All right, guys. Um, not the most happy dappy video to make my comeback, but you know, it's all good. We're gonna keep this thing going, and if anything, that what happened last night has allowed me to pick up the camera again and start vlogging because I've been out of it, like I said, for about two months. So, starting this second chapter of my time in Mexico City, it's going to be interesting to see how things evolve and uh, what this new year has in store for me. So once again, thank you for watching. As always, I love you all. 
click the thumbs up, leave the comment, and I'll be back with a new video real soon. Peace out.